example of what I'm talking about, how government operates directly with the underworld. Christianity is sun worship based on astrology. You know, the mystery of iniquity was already working more than 2,000 years ago during the time of the apostles. This is a clue that the powers of darkness had already been in motion during the time of the Mashiach, you know, the one who the world calls Jesus. Now the powers that be and the wicked rules of this world, the Catholic Church, the Harlot Churches, all of them are knee deep in the mystery of iniquity. Now the mystery is unraveling right before our eyes in the Christian church. Christianity is at the forefront. When was the word Christian first used as a believer of Christ? Acts 11.26, where it states, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. The Greek word used in the passage is Christianos, meaning follower of Christ. If you do your research, you'll actually find that there's much information about the book of Matthew being written in Hebrew. George Howard published a book called The Hebrew Gospel of Matthew. In his book, he shows the original Hebrew version of Matthew on one side of the page and the English version on the other side. What I find amazing is that the word Messiah, which is actually Mashiach, is in almost every place where you see Christ in the King James Version. The early believers were called Christians or Christianos in the Greek and Aramaic manuscripts, but not in the Hebrew. The correct word would have been Masiyak, or Messiah, which is what the disciples, Hebrews, Judah, or Yehuda, and early believers would have called the Savior. The word Christian and Christ originates from the Greek word Christos, which is the Greek translation of the Hebrew word Masiyak. Both words basically mean anointed. Hebraic Bibles restored the word to Messianics, what most modern Christians don't realize is that there was a deity by the name of Serapis, whose followers were called Christianos, Christians. As early as 200 BCE, there were pagan worshippers of Serapis that called themselves Christians. At the Vatican, this statue of the Roman pagan deity Mithras, with the words Crestos Mithras. Mithrasism was the main pagan religion of ancient Rome and became blended with the Messianics of Israel through the compromises of the Nicene Council, headed by Constantine and his son Crispus. The iconic scenes of Mithras show him being born from a rock, slaughtering a bull, and sharing a banquet with the god Sol, the sun. Thus we have a merge of the early Church of Rome with Mithrasism, and forming the RCC, Roman Catholic Church. The early assembly of believers referred to in the Hebrew tongue as Messianics would not want to call themselves Christians or Christianos. They were called Christians or Christianos by non-believers and not by themselves. The true followers of the Messiah would not want to be called after the name of pagan worshippers of Serapis. These worshippers of Serapis had been calling themselves Christianos for more than two centuries before the Messiah was even born. It's obvious that the non-believers were confusing the Messianic believers with the worshippers of Serapis. This is how paganism got mixed into the truth. And just as Paul Shaul had stated, the mystery of iniquity had already begun to work in his days. Why were the early believers called Christianos? a Greek word in Antioch. Antioch was an ancient Greek city. Only a Greek speaking person will call the followers of the anointed, the Messiah, the Mashiach, Christianos. Antioch was the capital of the Seleucid Empire and later became a major metropolis in the Roman Empire, the kingdom of the Edomites. The original biblical manuscripts were not written in English. Of them, the most popular were the Septuagint, which was written in Greek, Peshitta, which was written in Middle Aramaic, the Textus Receptus, written in Greek, and the Vulgate, which was written in Latin. The Septuagint is a pre-Christian translation of the Hebrew Bible, 
and some related texts into Koine Greek. The Greek manuscripts are called the Codex Vaticanus and Codex Sinaiticus. Fragments are dated around the end of the second century, and complete scripts are dated around the fourth century. The King James Version of the Bible was not translated from the Septuagint, but from the Textus Receptus. Why is this important to know? If you research Rome or Romans, you will notice that it is not recorded in the Old Testament at all. But you will find it in the Apocrypha, which was removed out of the 1611 King James Bible. You can also find the word Romans in the Book of Daniel of the Septuagint. Were they deliberately trying to hide who the Romans are? In the Septuagint, the Book of Daniel 1130 translates the occurrence of Kittim in as Romans. Maccabees 1.1 states that Alexander the Great, the Macedonian, had come from the land of Kittim, or the land of the Romans. There is estimated to be about 100 books that have been either removed or not included in the Bible. The Catholics even debated on whether or not to remove the book of Revelation out of the Bible. Lewis Ginsburg, in his book titled Legends of the Jews, writes, They, Esau and Jacob, will never be in the same estate. Esau will vaunt lords, while Jacob will have kings. They, Israel and Rome, are the two nations destined to be hated by all the world. One will exceed the other in strength. First, Esau will subjugate the whole world. This is a white man's world. The white man from Europe dominates the whole planet. White men go into any country and kill everybody, take over anything they want. This is a white man's country. It's a white man's world. But in the end, Jacob will rule over all. Legends, Volume 1, page 314. Ginsburg further relates that God will call out to the Messiah, roar at this monster that devours the fat of the nations, that justifies its claims for recognition through being a descendant of Abraham by his grandson Esau, the nation that kept Israel back from the study of the Torah and tempted them to deeds that are in accord with the wishes of Satan. Legends, Volume 3, page 167. Don Isaac Abarbanel, 1437-1508, a wealthy Jewish statesman and philosopher, believed that a tradition existed that many of the early Christians were Edomites. Ernest L. Martin, an author, historian, theologian, and meteorologist, in a book titled The People That History Forgot, claimed that most of the Edomites from Edom and many from Tyre went to the west to Italy and other places where they became Christian. His book says that the Edomites migrated in masses to western regions of the Roman Empire. They became Christian but retained something of their previous practices and influenced early Christianity with their pagan traditions. Esau, like Jacob, was a mighty man of renown in ancient times. He was an explorer and wanderer, as well as a mighty hunter. 